Deus. On this island. Oh, well, that's only the automatic lighthouse we can see from the farm. Grandpa says there's no one here but the birds and some wild ponies. Come on, let's go. Where are you going? To explore. Now well, let's go. I think we ought to wait on the beach, like Grandpa told us to. We got plenty of time before he comes back. This is the rib bone from the hull of a ship that's been wrecked and buried here. I'll bet you this is a regular graveyard for... It's just an old piece of wood. Gee, you were the one who was so anxious to come here, and now you don't want to even explore, Acetine. Well, I'm gonna... I'm going to look for some wild ponies. Oh, look! Get down, so they won't see us. Look at that one ahead of all the others. the Pied Piper's band. She's just like he described her. Shh, don't scare him away. They're going away. Well, they must have known we were here. You think it was her? You think it really was? Yeah, I know it was her. She's just like Daddy told us. Remember what he said about her? That she was the only pony he ever saw in Acetine that he really wanted. Do you suppose he knows we just saw the Phantom? Maybe sometimes, when they feel like it, they could even come down and ride on the Phantom. They could, you know, if they wanted to. Your mother, she didn't care for riding much. She liked it all right, but it wasn't very important to her. Not like it was to Dad. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could... I mean, the Phantom, if we could... Grandpa said I could ride a Pony Pinning Day with him this summer. Or 
fire department wouldn't take less than a hundred dollars for her. But if we could earn enough money, Whoa. it'd be almost like... Whoa. <laughs> well, how do you like the island? Well, we saw some wild ponies, and we saw the phantom, too. We're sure it was her, Grandpa. Well, it could be. High Piper grazes his mares on this side of the island. Hey, where'd you hear about the phantom? Well, Dad talked about her. He told us all about her. How about that now? Bob only. Your daddy only saw her once when she was a yearling. She was the first wild pony he ever really set his mind to have. Well, hasn't anybody ever caught the phantom on pony pinning day? Nope. She always outrun us, you know. There's one pony has a heart set on staying free. Grandpa, is it true about the Spanish galleon and the wild ponies? Or is it just a legend like some people say it is? Of course it's true. Why, every one of these ponies and these herds out here are direct descendants of those Spanish horses. Happened right out there on that reef. Way back in the early 1600s. You see, the Spaniards had to have horses to tote the gold out of the mines in Peru. Well, the only way they could get the critters was to bring them across the ocean in ships. Well, one of those Spanish galleons got herself caught in a howling northeaster. Wild Sea just slapped that galleon silly and finally flung her onto the reef there to turn her into kindling wood. Now, the only thing we know for sure was that when her ribs stove in and the whole ship opened up like a stepped-on strawberry box, a cargo of horses was finally free of the hole and found themselves swimming for their lives. So they came ashore on acetate, and the sweetness of the rain-washed air Made them forget the unhappy days and nights they spent pent up. Instead of musty hay, they had the salty taste of marsh grass. Strange to them, but wonderful. Best of all, nobody lived here to hinder them none. Nobody at all. White men finally came to live on Chincoteague, but they left Assateague here with the ponies all alone. Did the white men ever try to tame the ponies? Or the pioneers on Chincoteague. They were too busy to fool around with the wild thrashing horses. Besides that, the wild ones ain't even worth the gentlemen. Only the youngsters. They're the only ones worthwhile bothering with as far as the gentleman goes. And remember that. Hmm? Tide's ebbing. Best we'd be making home. Grandpa, can I drive the boat? can take turns. Grandpa? Yeah? How'd Pony Pinning Day start? Oh, long before my time. It's one of the oldest roundups in America. When did they start swimming the ponies across the channel? Oh, that come quite a bit later. Kind of added fun to the whole outing. Grandpa, do they only sell the foals? Only the foals. And some of the eelings. It's like I said, only the youngsters are worthwhile bothering about as far as the gentleman goes. They only sell the foals and yearlings? Yep. How old's the phantom? Oh, I would say, uh, she's about three years old now. Well, supposing somebody had the money and they... Why'd you shush your sister? Well, I, I did it because, well, she was gonna... Well, we kind of planned on... Shh. You kind of planned on what? Oh, you. Well, it's a surprise. Yeah, for Grandma. Oh, for Grandma, well. Don't they ever let girls ride in the roundup? Oh, now 
And you'll have plenty to do helping prepare the food. But I can write as good as Paul. Don't you think I can, Grandpa? Well, that has nothing to do with it. Women folk ain't allowed to write on the Roundup. But... I, I don't want to hear any more about it now. Go to bed, dear. Good night, Grandma. Good night, Grandpa. Good night, and sleep tight, and don't let anything bite. <laughs> Sometimes it's just awful being a girl. Grandpa says I can't ride with you on pony pinning day because woman folk aren't allowed. I'll bet the Phantom wouldn't shy away from another girl. Maybe because she's a three-year-old. The fire department won't even sell her. Not even to us? I don't know. Do you hear what Grandpa said? He said there weren't many that could ever be gentle after living wild for so long. I bet we can do it. Pa, I just know we can. Well, we're gonna have her, Maureen. How will we get the money? I don't know yet. But we're gonna own the Phantom. And that's a promise. I finished helping Grandma with the dinner. Are these acetate colts? Yep. Except they were all full right here on the farm. But tell me, Mr. Beebe, how come those wild horses you get over at Assateague are so small? Never seen one over 13 hands. How much is a hand again? Four inches. Shh. Well, they're small for a couple of reasons. Generations of inbreeding, and, and their diet isn't what you call first class. How much for that one there, Mr. Beebe? The small one. $125. I like that coat best of all. You like them all best of all. Besides, it's Grandpa's business selling ponies, and he can't keep them forever. <laughs> Open the gate, Paul. Might as well have gone to Assateague and captured one. Wouldn't have been any wilder. I'd save myself some money. To begin with, those ponies belong to our fire department. And nobody's allowed to just go over and help himself to a horse. And even if it was permitted, it'd take more than just one man to pick a, a foal out of a wild herd. More than likely, the boss stallion would kick you to death. I'll have to spend another 20 just to get somebody to take the fight out of them. You know somebody who can break them in real quick? If I did, I wouldn't even speak to him. A good trainer won't break a fool. He'll gentle him. Or breaking him's the quick way. But gentle him, that's the sure way. But uh, how long will that take? Well, depends upon you and your children. Just keep talking to them. Horses soon learn to like the sound of the human voice. After a while, they learn to trust you. Now, he's scared. He'd be scared when you get him home. He ain't never had a ride in a thing like that before. <laughs> but be kind. Be patient with him. After a while, he'd be following you around like a happy hound dog. I'll tell you something. If you're not happy with this pony in, say, uh, all about a month, you just haul him back here, and I give you back your money. I couldn't ask for a better deal than that. Thanks a lot, Mr. Beebe. Thank you. Bye now. Horses are dumb animals. There's no reason for its owners to be. Well, will he bring him back, Grandpa? Do you think he will? I don't know. I don't know, Paul. Break him. What are you doing? Think that man will bring him back? Marine? I've been thinking. We're gonna buy the Phantom by Pony Pinning Day. We're just gonna have to set a course and hold to it. Pony Pinning Day is only in four months, you know. Well, we can get odd jobs to do after school. Then when school's out for the summer, we can really work. Did you hear what that man said? You'd have to pay 20 extra dollars to pay for the gentleman of that coal? All right, now look. Six of the mares have a coal apiece. Black has a yearling and the chestnut a suckling. 
How many do you think Grandpa will sell by next July? All but the suckling. That's what I figured. Now, we could teach them some good manners. Maybe halter break them. I bet your people would pay more money for them, wouldn't they? Maybe they would. Well, sure they would. Maybe Grandpa would pay us the difference. But don't you tell them why we want the money. Sure smells good, Ida. Don't you like it? Oh, yes, Grandma, it's fine. Then don't let it grow in your plate. Aren't you hungry, dear? Yes, Grandma. I mean, yes, I am. Grandma, do you like mannerly colts? Yes, I do. But I like mannerly grandchildren who eat their supper even more. What he means, Grandma, if you came here to Pony Farm to buy a foal, would you choose a gentle one, or would you choose one that was wild? <laughs> I can just see your grandma pro hopping along on a wild pony. <laughs> <laughs> Not likely you'll ever see that. Of course, I'd take the manly coat. Well, would you be willing to pay more money for it? Well, it depends how much more. Mm -hmm. Well, if it was nice and mannerly, would you pay as much as ten dollars more? Mm hmm. I think it would. There you see, Grandpa. See what? Well, if Marine and I halter break and gentle all your colts. Could you pay us the $10 extra that you get for selling each of them? What for? Must be a secret, Clarence. I'll tell you something. I never pried a secret out of nobody in my whole life. And I'm not going to start poking and prying now. It's a deal. And you don't need to tell me what you're going to do with the money. Until you're ready to spend it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm real glad for what you did, Clarence. Letting them earn some money by gentling the colts may help them to get over the loss of Bob and Mary. My land. They got that coat gentled down already. <laughs> gentled nothing. I bet you I know why he's eating out of their hands. Look, Grandpa. Look how he's right on my hand now. Give me the sugar. Both of you. Don't feed the foal sugar. But he loves it, Grandpa. Of course he does. But let me tell you something now. And don't you forget it. A folder develops a sweet tooth. More times than not, it'll turn into a nipper. And sooner or later, he'll bite the hand that sugared him. Mm. Well, I didn't know that. Well, you know it now. No sugar, understand? Yes, Grandpa. All right, now. Take him inside and put him there with his mama. OK. Come on. Don't interfere with my trying to teach them their duties. And we're not going to spoil them like some grandparents do. Yes, ma'am.
Paul, Marine. Yes, Grandma? Oh, your school clothes. Your nice school clothes. Just look what you've done to them. You think I'll let you go to school wearing dirty clothes like that? Well, I just got them a little bit dusty, Grandma. Well, you go upstairs and change. I'm not going to have anybody in this town thinking your Grandpa and I don't care how you look. But first, sit down. Both up. You're not on vacation like the other times when you came visiting. You live here now. Oh, I know it's a lot different than what you were used to in Philadelphia, but you just got to learn that on a place like this, each one of us has to do his and her share. Now, you think your grandpa and I have given you too many chores to do? No, no Grandma. Each have your own room, which you're supposed to keep tidy. I'll go up and make my bed right away, Grandma. I will too, Grandma. And you keep those halters in the tack room, not in your bedrooms. I'm not through. Marine, you forgot to gather the eggs last night. I had to do it after you went to bed. Grandma, I'll clean the hen house out as soon as I get home after school today. You can play with the foes all you like, but not until after your chores are done. Is that clear? I go clean up for school. <laughs> Money to get a general one, Mr. Beebe. I reckon it is. I got luck on the pony. Thank you. Well, I don't think I have uh, two fives. Is the ten spot okay? Oh, yes, fine. Uh, you really earned it. I didn't expect to get a hundred dollars for that pony. Man gave me a hundred and a quarter without that denial. <laughs> Pretty. I'll say. Where are we going to keep it? Well, I found this in the barn. It's old tobacco pouch of Grandpa's. Well, he doesn't need it anymore. That holds a lot. Where do we keep that? Huh? It belongs to both of us. I, I mean, it's to buy the Phantom with, and she'll belong to both of us. That's right. So, I was going to keep it in my bureau. But I want to keep it in your room. It's all right with me. You keep it in here. Which one shall we gel next? Oh, I guess the brown and white pool. Okay. We can get a lot done tomorrow, Saturday. Boy, I'll sure be glad when school's out. Just interferes with everything. You children get to bed. Yes, yes Grandma. Grandma. She just like only $90 left to get. <laughs> Good night, Paul. Good night. Sleep well,
he's not out riding. Maureen, what'd you plan to do today? Nothing but what I told you, Grandpa. We were going to start breaking the brown and white filly as soon as we finished all our chores. Clarence, I'm getting worried. Oh, Ida, there's nothing to worry about. Paul! Hey, Mr. Baby! Mr. Baby, brought your boat back. Afraid, girl. I won't hurt you. Well, you sure scared the pants off your folks. Ask the Coast Guard, there's Ask the Coast Guard one. It's the BB boy, and he's okay. Pick us up. Out. You got your grandma so sick with worry, she almost had to take to her bed. You got me so upset, all I can think of doing is taking you across my knee and wailing the tar out of you. How do you think we felt when our boat was towed back? Sorry, Grandpa. I didn't mean to lose the boat. We were scared you would drown. Why did you do it, Paul? Nancy, Grandma, why'd you do a fool thing like that go off to Assateague alone? I don't know. I knew it was wrong, but... I promise you something. If you ever do a trick like that again, you lead off the mantle for a week. Go change your clothes and, and meet me in the barn. We'll hay the horses. We're all late with our chores today, thanks to you. Sorry, Grandpa. Real sorry, Grandma. Some is, some ain't. Kin with the wild thing. I used to be myself. I used to hear the call of Assateague when I was a young one. Now I don't hear it no more. I don't see the beauty no more. Now when I go over there, all I do is cuss the flies and mosquitoes. <laughs> you sure give everybody a scare. Did you see the phantom again? Did you get real close to her? Oh, she's so different from all the other horses. It's like she knows you something special or something. What do you mean? Well, 
She's part of the Hearn, and she belongs to the Pied Piper. But yet she doesn't. We just gotta have her, Maureen. You've sure got a nerve. Why didn't you take me with you? I'm sorry. Good girl at your new home, you hear? You won't have any trouble with her, sir. She's real gentle. Let's go, dear. Thanks a lot, Mr. Beebe. Sure appreciate it. Well, that's the last of the foes. Thanks, Grandpa. You learned. We can't have the phantom. What? Well, she's a three year old, and Grandpa said that only the young ones could be tamed. She can be tamed. Pa, what if he says no? She can be tamed. And we won't ever sell her. Not for anything. Well, yeah, but before we can buy her, we gotta earn another $40. We will. I know we will. <laughs> Old Mr. Platt's gonna pay us a good price for these. I can't stand them. Ew, don't, Pa. <laughs> Ow! There must be another way to earn the money we need. What's the matter? Did Grandpa Beebe fly you off in the farm? No, sir. But we just have to earn some money. Sure do need it. We'll do anything. I can't give you any work, Count and Clam. But I'll buy all you can dig. Thanks, Mr. Burton. Thanks for me, too, Mr. Burton. Thanks, Mr. Burton. We really appreciate it. Ah, oh, how's your grand folks? They're fine, thank you. Selling many ponies these days? Well, no, sir. Last coat was sold quite a while ago. Nothing since then. Mr. Burton, would you buy some more clams from us if we catch them? Yep, yep. I will. Bye, Mr. Burton. Bye. Six dollars short, and it's only a week until pony pinning day. I know there's quite a lot of weeds in Mrs. Chester's garden. Maybe she'll hire me to home for it. Well, as soon as our chores are done tomorrow, I'll go into town. Somebody must need something done. No, sir, but but I can help you hammer some lobster traps together. Don't need any. I got more than I can sell now. Well, how about me sweeping up the place? I could do a real good job, make everything real neat and clean, for only a dollar. Fifty cents? A quarter? <laughs> I just got to earn the money, Mr. Hancock. We need it real bad. Is things that tough, huh? Yes, sir. 
All right. Get your hands. Two dollars. Forty cents. We made it. When can we bring her home? Well, the roundup's on Wednesday and the sale's on Thursday. So Thursday, I guess. Paul, won't it be wonderful? We'll own the Phantom. As soon as Grandpa gets home from town today, I'll talk to him about renting one of his empty stalls. Phantom's got to have a real nice stall to live in. How much will the rent be? I don't know. I can do extra work for Grandpa to pay for it. Phantom's worth it. Uh, well, I guess that's about it, Charlie. Go on, how much? How much do you? Oh, why don't I figure it all up a little later? And you can take care of it next time you come in for feed. Well, why don't you figure it up now, and I'll, I'll pay you now. There's no hurry about it, Clarence. I trust you. Well, I never gave you any reason not to. Come on, now, how much do I owe you? I have to get back to the farm. Clarence, we've been friends for a long time. You don't have to beat around the bush with me. I'm willing to give you credit. I don't remember that I asked you for it. Now, what bush are you beating around? What's the matter with you? I'm trying to do you a favor, and you're losing your temper about it. I'm not losing my temper. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on around here. Jenkins over to the harness shop gave me the same kind of run around. Now, what's coming to this town? Doesn't anyone want to do cash business anymore? Well, we heard you were in a little trouble. We were only trying to help. Trouble? Trouble? What kind of trouble? Shucks, Clarence. Any man can run a little short of money from time to time. Ain't nothing to be ashamed about. Now, who told you that? Oh, quite a few folks. You mean everything's all right with you? Well, it was until I heard this. Now, who's been spreading this kind of talk about me? By the way, your grandchildren been pestering everybody for jobs, saying how bad they needed money. Well, we kind of got the idea that you folks was hard up. How much do I owe? Eighteen dollars even. Any jealousin? Yeah. She insisted on my taking these things for Marine. Said her daughter had outgrown them. What else she say? Well, she didn't come right out with it, but I got the feeling she thinks we can't afford to buy clothes for Marine and Paul. Clarence, you're keeping something from me. Are we in any kind of trouble? Them two young ones are. Well, what do they do? That's what I aim to find out. Marine! Paul! Grandpa about renting the stall for the Phantom now. Sit down. Now, what exactly have you two been up to? Well, we've been cleaning up the small corral. I don't mean that. I mean, since school's been let out for the summer, what have you been doing in town every day? We've been working, but not until our chores are done. We've done all sorts of work. So I heard. And what did you tell the folks that you pestered for these jobs? We didn't pester anybody, Grandpa. Answer me, what did you tell them? Well, we only told them that we wanted work and... Because we had to earn some money. You said you had to earn some money? We told everybody we needed it real bad, so they'd hire us. Oh. And did you tell them that you needed it real bad because I was broke? Oh, no, Grandpa. Well, that's what you got everybody thinking, that I can't even pay my bills. You got them thinking, I'm so hard up, I can't even put clothes on your back. Why did you do it? Well, we needed the money. For what? What are you trying to be, the richest kids in Virginia? You got $60 for me for a gentle in the falls. Yeah, but Grandpa, that wasn't enough. Enough for what? Enough to buy the Phantom with. The Phantom? Well, you said that the fire department charges $100 for a pony. 
so we just had to earn the rest. We earned $102.40. You don't need to buy any pony. The corral is full of them. Go out and ride any time you want. But we want to own one, Grandpa. We want one that doesn't have to be sold. Well, then pick one out. You can have it for keeps. But it's the Phantom we want, Grandpa. We've wanted her since the first time we saw her. Wanting her and getting her is two different things. She's given the horse laugh to the best roundup men on Chikatig for the past two years. What makes you think she can be caught? Because I'll be riding with you this time, Grandpa. Or, listen to me. The Phantom's not a horse. The Phantom's a piece of wind and sky. That's why we call her the Phantom. But Grandpa, that's why we want her so much. Because she's different. If you'll rent us one of your empty stalls, well, I'll do extra work to pay for it. Knowing what you want, going after it is a virtue. I have more than their share. I'll tell you something. If the Phantom's caught and in the pony pen and grounds the day after tomorrow, you can buy it, and I'll give you a stall and feed and everything for nothing. They think I'm poor. I'm the richest man on this whole island. That's a black common. Sure is frisky, isn't he? He's owned by his rider. Young Albert Lee brings him down from Pocomoke City every year. Guess he wants to give him a feel of the track before the race tomorrow. Yeah! 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 He's fast, really fast. Sure he is. He's won a pony pinning day race for the last two years in a row. We never seem able to give him any competition here in Chincoteague. Hi, Tom. Hi, Paul. Have a good time on around up in the morning. Yes, sir. I've gathered corn, carrots, rutabagas, and little jar of molasses to sort of whet her appetite when she gets here. All right, but you be sure and lay a clean bed of straw for the phantom. I will, just, just before Grandma and I go to town to watch his ponies swim in the channel. You're right, watch I. Do you think he can outrun the Phantom? Well, not likely. The important thing for you to remember is to keep your mind on the Roundup. Follow the orders of the Roundup man. Uh, all right, let's go. <laughs> Good morning, boys. Let's go aboard. Mr. Maddox. Ma, you and uh, Jeff ride south. Uh, Lloyd, you and Bart ride north. Three, you and Clarence and the grandson go east, and the rest of us go towards the woods and bring all ponies to the old pound. What time is low water this morning? About 10 o'clock. Better figure on get them to the old pen about 9.30 or thereabouts. We'll rest them before swimming them across the channel. Let's go. All right, boy.
papers bunch. Get it! you had a baby. <laughs> Think he's lost? I don't rightly know. Boy, that's something to be proud of, bringing in the Phantom. Oh, I don't know. I think she sort of brought me in. Well, the Pied Piper's got a bugle that can be heard a long way. She wants to be with him now, especially now that she has a foe. Tide's out, the current's slack, time to swim the pony across the channel. Let's get him started.
Oh, she's drowning. I swim the whole way with you, son. You're the most wonderful and craziest young one in the whole world. Can I get through? Excuse me. Paul, are you all right? Oh, Paul, you were wonderful. Is that Phantom's coat? It sure is. That's Misty. How come she has a name already? Well, I, well, I just called her that. On account of that's what she looked like when, when I first saw her. All Misty. You could have waited to talk it over with me before you named her. It is sort of a nice name, though. Misty. I like it. Don't be dropping none of those popcorns. Eat them all. Hey, let's go see Misty again. Now, don't be gone long. The race will be starting soon. <laughs> you want a hot dog? Yeah. All right. Hi, youngin. Hi, Mr. Alves. Hi, Mr. Alves. How about buying the last two chances on saw opponents? The raffled off side tonight. No, thank you. Only a dollar chance. Hey, how about a hundred dollar pony for a dollar? $2.40. Well, how can we buy both of them tomorrow? Well, I've been thinking about it. We just have to be here around sunup so we can catch the fire chief real early. You know, I can't say to him, Mr. Jones, sir, we want to buy the Phantom and our Philly Misty. But we've only got $102.40. We've earned $102 in less than four months. And we don't forget the 40 cents. And we can earn another $100 in four more months. So the fire department will be sure and get all their money for Misty. That's what I'll say to him. Maybe I'll say it to him today. If I see him. Well, can you think of anything better? She sure picked an awful time to have Misty. Let's go find Mr. Jones now. Do you think Lucy Lee's got a chance? How about Beaches? Think she can beat Black Comet? Well, they'll make a race of it. <laughs> I'll be seeing you. Hello, Paul. Maureen. Hello, Mr. Jones. You having a good time? Ladies and gentlemen, 
We know the pony sale isn't until tomorrow morning. But Look, we'd like I gotta, to talk I gotta to get you over about... there. I'll see you later. Mr. Jones, Paul and I want to buy the Phantom. Come on, Maureen, let's go to the race. The race is for one half mile. Riding Black Comet is his owner, 12-year-old Alan Lee. Riding Patches is 11-year-old Denny Cole. Up on Lucy Lee is 12-year-old Benson Hanley. And they're off! Come on, Denny! Year the Phantom's gonna be in this race. Next year she's gonna win. You just wait and see. Come on, let's go find Mr. Jones. Paul, look. Well, we'll just have to get here early in the morning and talk to Mr. Jones then. Mr. Jones and then settle it with him. Grandpa said he'd be somewhere around the coat pen. There he is. Come on. in less than four months, and we can earn a hundred more if you'd only trust us for it. We'll hunt clams and we'll even hunt for crabs if you'll let us, Mr. Jones. I know we can earn the money. I know we can. We didn't know that the Phantom was going to have a foal when we first decided to get her. Why in thunder didn't you tell me? But we tried to yesterday. Sorry, I didn't know you wanted them. Come on over here and see Last night, this man by the name of Mr. Foster looked me up. He's got business in Norfolk, and he couldn't be here today for the sale. Well, he and his boy took a fancy to that fool, and... He bought Misty last night? Well, he put $50 down. Well, I told him that the fool was too young to be separated from his mother. Taking the Phantom, too? Picking them both up when he drives back through here on Saturday. You know what he told me before? You see, it wouldn't be right if I went back on that deal I made with Mr. Foster. I'm sorry, Paul. Maureen, I'm real sorry. last night.
long time ago, when I was about your age. I had my heart set on a spaniel pup. Before I saved all the money to get him, the man sold him to somebody else. I felt so bad, I thought I'd never get over it. But you know something? My daddy bought me another dog, and before I knew it, I couldn't even remember what that spaniel pup looked like. You want to stay and watch them drive the ponies back through town for their swim back to Astigue? It's the same as before, isn't it? Yeah. But they go in the other direction. <laughs> we got yours to do at home, Grandpa. gone on that darn roundup. I should have gone right up to Mr. Jones, race or no race. Well, we both should have. We should have told him then. What'll we do with the money? Maybe we can buy an electric toaster for Grandma and Grandpa. Save the rest of the money to go to college on the mainland when we get older. All right. Shall we do it tomorrow? Might as well. Paul? Maureen, I don't want to talk anymore about it. Come over here a minute. Mr. Foster has a problem here, and I thought you might be able to help him out with it. It's like this. The other day, Mr. Foster and his son bought them a mare and a foal. A mare and a foal? And on the way out, they took a chance on that sorrel pony in the raffle. Yes, sir. Well, they won the raffle. And now Tommy here says that he likes the sorrel pony better than he does the foal. Better than Misty? Yep. Now, you can see this presents a real problem to Mr. Foster. He don't want to go back on his word because they already put up the money. And we were wondering if you might possibly think of someone who could take them off his hands for uh, maybe a hundred dollars. For the two of them? Yep, I'll take a hundred dollars for the lot. Mr. Foster, you got yourself a deal. the way she keeps looking off at acetate. She's just not used to civilization yet. Will she ever be? Of course. She just needs time, that's all. You like? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. She's learning. Mm-hmm. Easy 
you a girl. <laughs> we'll be finished soon. Just keep going. <laughs> Let's me brush her now. Oh, any critter would learn to like that. She ain't gentled. You got her. But you ain't gentled her yet. Not by a long shot. <laughs> I'm gonna get a Brock Buster to break that fence. I uh, know, Grandpa. I told you in the beginning only young ones like Misty here are worth our fooling with. Do you think I want you children hurt by a wild pony? But he didn't hurt me, Grandpa. I just fell down on us. I mean, she'll get used to a lead rope just like she got used to us petting her. But I'm willing to pay for the Brock Buster myself. I I'm offering you that. But, Grandpa, you said it was wrong to break a pony. Yeah, you said breaking a pony was the fast way and gentling was the sure way. Well, we want a gentler, not break her. <laughs> Stop pestering me. Why, you lace a skirt around her. Grandpa says she won't mind it too much after she gets used to it. Why are you so surprised at his gentle in the phantom? You're the one who said it. Said what? That he was kin with the wild things. Grandpa? Huh? We 
just can't get the Phantom to take a bit in her mouth. Well, uh... What's the matter? Ain't she traveling right? Yeah, but we just lean the way we want her to go and lay the rope over against her neck. Well, what more do you want? You mean it's all right? Of course it's all right. The Phantom need never know a metal bet. I think she'd be the happier for it. Why'd you ever ask a question like that? Well... Well, we were kind of worried that you'd be sort of ashamed of us if we didn't do the right job on our own pony. Ashamed? Why, I'm so proud I'm almost busted. Name me two other kids that ever gentled a three-year-old wild pony. <laughs> <laughs> Misty sure is happy here. Yeah, but I wonder if the Phantom is happy, too. Mm. And did you see her when I rode her down to the point this morning? She was running so fast that her hoofs were hardly touching the ground. Yeah, I know she's happy when she runs, but... Then we'll just have to run her all the time to keep her happy. No kerosene heater in the barn. Can we have it to put in the phantom stall? What for? Well, to keep her and Misty warm. You must be freezing out there, Grandpa. Oh, compared to some of the winter she spent over in Assateague without so much as a roof over her head, well, this is a regular vacation. <laughs> yeah, but what about Misty? Well, this is her first winter. Oh, her mom will take care of her. She won't suffer none. They're all right. Don't worry about them. Hey, but uh, you're going to catch a death if you keep walking around in your bare feet. Up again. Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. They just love popcorn. Me too. <laughs> sure sign of spring. Mm -hmm. Friendly or not friendly, I will not have you in my kitchen. You get out of here and stay out. Will one of you please teach this pesky creature she's a filly and not a human? Honestly! <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Paul. Hi, Denny. How's Patches? Fine. How's the Phantom? Fine. I heard she runs pretty good. You going to enter her in the race next Pony Pain Day? Well, we haven't been invited to yet, but I'm hoping to be. Patches nearly beat the Black Comet last year. I know. Fresh to us from the trees. Okay, well, let's go. All right. She can. Just cause the Phantom beat Patches in a little race in the meadow don't mean anything. It means she's faster than the pony that come closest to beating the Black Comet last year, that's all. Can't you hold still? The Colton boy said the Phantom didn't more than just beat Patches, she beat the britches off. Him. I wouldn't bet on her. Who's asking you to? Don't matter how much speed she's got, the Black Comet's got the experience. Since when don't it matter how much speed a pony's got in a race? Jeff, I think you nicked me. 
The way you keep jerking your head around, you're lucky I didn't cut you to the bone. You had earned a phantom in the race this year, Clarence? It's not for me to say. That pony belongs to my grandchildren. All right, Jeff, get on with it, get on with it. Plum tuckered out. <laughs> I think he's mad about the Phantom beating him so many times. Bet I could beat Patches even worse than you did. Now, what makes you think that? Because I weigh less. And the Phantom runs even faster with me riding her. Well, Rain. Come here. You have a visitor. Hello, Paul, Maureen. Hello, Mr. Jones. Jones. I heard some rumors that you two own a pony that might just bring the racing championship back to Shinkatee. <laughs> now, the volunteer fire department would be honored if you'd consent to enter the Phantom in that race next Pony Pennon Day. Will you do it? Yes, well, yes we... we... We were hoping you'd ask us to. Then it's all settled. It'll be the Phantom against the Black Comet. It hasn't been decided yet about the other Chinkatee pony. It might be Patches or maybe Wild Maddox Firefly. Mr. Jones, are there any rules about who can ride in the race? Only that an owner or owner's child must ride. We don't allow professional jockeys, if that's what you mean. Nobody over 16 years old. Are girls allowed? We've never had a girl rider before, but there's no rule against it. You eat every bite of that now. I want you to be in real good condition for the race. Today after school, I'll take you down to the beach and let you run. I'll ride her after school today. It's my turn. Well, it's not just riding her. You gotta put her in special condition. I know just as much about it as you do. Three miles, start at a slow jog, trot her, then ask for a burst of speed and slow jog her all the way home. Grandpa told me about it, too, you know. It's the Pied Piper again. I'd know his call anywhere. Clarence, huh? what's the matter between Paul and Marine? Well, I know something's going on. He comes in, she goes out. She goes in, he comes out. They just rode off together on the Phantom and still managed to act like they were on separate ponies. to settle it sometime, so we might as well settle it now. Settle, as far as I'm concerned. Girls just don't ride in races. Chief Jones says there's no rule against it. I don't care. It's just not right. It's not fitting. I can ride just as good as you can. That has nothing to do with it. Fanner's just as much mine as she is yours. All right, then we'll flip for it. Two out of three times. I don't care if it's five out of five. Now, you listen here, Paul Beebe. You got to ride in the roundup because girls aren't allowed, so I get to ride in the race where girls are allowed. It's only fair. I guess that's right. Okay. You really mean it? You really and truly mean I can? If you want it that way. Oh, Paul, don't worry. The fan and I will win. I know, I promise. But don't do that. Isn't that the Black Comet? Vaughn. Hello? That's the Black Comet, isn't it? Fast as a comet, too. 
We saw her win the race last year. She sure is fast. Oh, my name's Paul Beebe, and this is my sister Maureen. This is the Phantom, and that's Misty, your colt. That's the Phantom? Yeah, and she's faster than your old horse. Yeah. Yeah. How'd you like to try and prove it? You just wait till Pony Pinning Day. You'll find out. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll race you right now. Go ahead and get on. You do it. You call it. If you think your nag can last that long, I'll race you to that sand dune and back to here. You can even let your sister say go. On your mark, get set, go! I'm willing to put my money where my mouth is. Now, which one of you think the Black Comet is going to win the next Pony Penny <laughs> Day race? You're wasting your time in shake and take, Clarence. Everybody's betting on the Phantom now. Only money you can find on the Comet's over on the mainland. Come on, Clarence. But I gotta get some bets down. I know. But we have to get started if you're gonna drive all the way to the mainland. Yes, sir, ladies and gentlemen. Step up and see the little mayor who's gonna bring the championship back to Chincoteague. Hard to believe, isn't it, Clarence? Hard to believe. They're babies, aren't they? <laughs> There, Maureen. Can't you see what she's doing? She's kicking her. She's kicking her full. I know what it looks like to you. Like that mare's trying to kick her baby away. Like she doesn't love anymore. But it's not like that at all. What she's really doing is proving her love. Showing it the hardest way you can by letting go. Oh, sure. She'd like to have her full depend on her always. But she knows that that time is over. That the time for letting go has come. Come on, let's go in. so much betting as there is this year. And the race isn't for two months yet. Gee, just think. This will be the first time in three years that Shinkatig ever had a winning pony. How much does the winner get? 
Hmm? How much does the winner get? Twelve dollars, I guess. Gee. I wish I could make the Phantom feel happier. She was happy when she beat the Black Comet. Yeah, but... She can't race all the time. She didn't finish all her oats last night. It's the Pied Piper. Gotta let her go back, Maureen. Let her go back to Assateague, where she belongs. Sorry about all the people who made bets on her. Well, they won't lose anything. We had to do it, Maureen. I couldn't stand seeing the Phantom so unhappy. Grandpa will understand. I guess she was just a Phantom after all. Never stopped belonging to Assateague and the Pied Piper. <laughs> 